it was beyond me that someone who had never seen me before, someone who had never spoken to me before, someone who knew absolutely nothing about me would want to inflict pain upon me for no other reason than the color of my skin. How can you hate me when you don't even know me? And for 49 years, I've been looking for the answer to that question. My name is Daryl Davis. I'm a musician, lecturer, author, actor, and race relations expert. This is uh, Roger Kelly. He was the Grand Dragon, meaning state leader for Maryland when I first met him. And then he rose to the level of Imperial Wizard, meaning national leader. And uh, today he went on to become one of my best friends and left the clan. One night in 1983, I find myself playing in a uh, country music bar. And a white gentleman, probably in his mid to late 40s, came up behind me and he says, man, I really like your all's music. He was fascinated with me and he wanted to buy me a drink. And he says, you know, this is the first time I ever sat down and had a drink with a black man. And I said, why? He looked back at me just as plain as day and he said, I'm a member of the Ku Klux Klan. I realized maybe I had found the way to get my answer to my question of how can you hate me when you don't even know me? Who better to ask? I learned that they are human beings and oftentimes you know, they care about the same things that I care about. We, we each may have a different um, idea on how to go about getting those things. Uh, I'm more inclusive of everybody where he was more exclusive of people who just look like him. So at that point, I decided, you know, I need to go and interview other clan people. And I'll go around the country and, and do that, and then put it all together, and I would have a book. In the process of seeking these answers, I began seeing people uh, over time rescind their beliefs. And the next thing I know, that ideology was being shed and I ended up with robes and hoods. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, you know, I'm onto something here. Let me see if it happens again. And I would continue, and it would happen again and again and again and again. Here we have the robe of an imperial wizard. This green is the color for the grand dragon with green adornments. This person here and he went to prison for four years for conspiring to bomb a synagogue in Baltimore. I met him when he came out of prison. He and I became the best of friends over time. Now, as a clan leader, you have to have a regular job. This is his uniform. He was a bona fide Klansman on the Baltimore City Police Force. I maintain my friendships with the people that I've met some are still in the clan. Many have gotten out and we remain friends and go out and hang out and do things together. At this point in time, I probably have maybe less than 45 or more than 40 robes and hoods. I'm glad that I have these things because it means the people who wore these things, who believed in what these things stood for, no longer wear them and no longer believe in them. <laughs> Now, I'm gonna tell you something. The media has misrepresented what happened in Charlottesville. What they're trying to put across to people is that the alt-right and these people were down in Charlottesville to protest the removal of the Robert E. Lee statue. That is false. Their purpose there was to initiate the beginning steps of a race war. And I know that for a fact because I know some of these people. So now they change the name from white supremacy to white separatists to white nationalists to um, alt-right. It's the same thing. A rose by any other name is still a rose. 
As we get closer and closer to the year 2042, the uh, white supremacist element in this country, which includes the Klan, the neo-Nazis, the alt-right, one thing that they say is that the population of this country will be 50-50. 50% white, 50% non-white. They call it the browning of America. They also call it white genocide. And the neo-Nazis and Klan people tell me, Daryl, I don't want my grandkids to be brown. And as we get closer and closer to that, you're gonna see more incidents of hate and violence. I am the eternal optimist. I do have hope for the future. I truly feel that our current president is the best thing that has happened to this country. I did not support him in the election, but I feel that he is the best thing that has happened, that's happened to this country because now this country is talking about a, a cancer that has plagued this country for centuries. That cancer known as racism has metastasized through our society. And in the past, it's been a taboo to talk about it. But now, during this current administration, people are talking about it. People are coming out and forming groups to address these issues. And now that we've had all this experience, shame on us if we don't put it to good use and say, okay, now what can we do to keep us together?